Good morning everyone and welcome to this new video. Today I have something really awesome for you and it is how to use Qt Designer to create Python user interfaces and use them inside Unreal Engine. In fact, this video will not be about how to create user interface but how to link them with Unreal. Before I start, I want to say that a big part of this code comes from a post on UDN and I will add the link in the description if you want to look at it. Also, I'm not an expert in PySide and Qt, and I don't know all of their functionalities, so if you have any suggestions on how to improve this system, let me know. Ok, now that everything is said, let's get this started. I will start by quickly show you the three little user interface that will be used today. They are really simple, only some labels, spacers, and a button. The time label will be updated by code, and the button will be used to affect some actors inside the world. Ok, perfect. It's now the time to start the real work. As you can see, there is a lot of code, and there is even more in the other tabs, but I will try to explain it as clearly as possible. At the bottom of the script, we have the main function, spawn Qt window. It will be used to spawn all our windows. Then, the upper part is used to set up the application system that gives us the possibility to have multiple windows, and to use the tick inside them. Wait, what? Can we really use the tick inside the editor? Yes? Thanks, Epic, for this. Ok, we'll start with the application. First, there is some functions, but we'll come back to them later. After, we start by getting the current instance of the application, and if there is none, we will create one. During the creation, we will connect the tick to it using the register slate post tick callback function. In my case, I'm connecting it to my Qt at tick function that will then pass it to all my currently open windows. We also need to make sure that we are keeping a reference of our tick window because we'll need to disconnect it before closing the application. This disconnect action is done inside my Qt app quit function with unregister slate post tick callback. Finally, I have a dictionary containing all the windows we spawned and the list of opened windows. We can now go through the spawn function. As input, we need to see which class we want to use to spawn our window. In my case, I have three classes. Qt window 1, Qt window 2, and Qt window 3. The first step is to check if there is already a window for this class, and if it's not the case, we'll spawn a new one. To spawn a new one, we will create a new instance of this class, then to be able to find it the next time, we'll add it into the dictionary. We also need to connect the about to close function to my Qt window closed function to be able to know when the window is closed. Finally, if the window is not already open, we can add it into the open list and then show it. Voila, that's it for the spawn system. The only thing that remains is to look at our Windows classes. First, we have the Windows name and the path of its UI file created inside Qt Designer. Then, we have the class and the only part that interests us in this video is the upper one. The bottom part is only about my custom functionalities to move the object inside the world. Inside the init, we have to create a variable that will know which function to call when this window is closed. In my case, I called it about to close. Then we load our interface, set it as child of this window, change the window's name, and finally position it onto the screen. My initialize widget function is only there to set up everything I need for my examples. The last thing we need to do is to implement two little functions. For the first one, we need to override the close event function and use it to call the function stored inside about to close. That will remove this window from the ticking loop. And then we need to create the function event tick because it will be called by our application. As I said, the bottom part is only used to change the text inside my widget and move some actors inside the world. So it will always be different based on what you need. All my three classes have the same code for the upper part, only the custom functionality changes. Well, that was a lot, and it's finally the time to show you some examples. So I will simply copy this little bit of code to import all my classes and spawn my windows, and then paste it inside Unreal. We can see that my three windows opened, and we can also see that the time label is updating on all of them. To prove that the tick is really stopping when the window is closed, I can close one or two of them, and wait for some time. Once it's done, I can reopen them and see that the amount of seconds are now different from the one I didn't close. Also, because I'm checking if the window is already open before I open a new one, I did not spawn a duplicated window for the one that was still open. 
Finally, if I click on the button, we can see that the object starts moving. This movement is happening inside the tick. So, in theory, if I close the window, it should stop moving. And it really stopped. Perfect. Voila. That's it for this long video. I hope it was useful. I'm going back to work and I'll see you in the next one.